Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Infugenic Renaissance. As you already noticed, I am recording from a slightly different location. This time I'm recording from Sri Lanka, where I am headed for a workation and participation in a Vipassana meditation, which I can discuss in more details if you want me to, but not at the moment. Today I want to dedicate this episode to harm reduction. Yeah, so when it comes to a phrase widely known as knowledge is power, in the context of psychedelics things are extremely different. So it could be on one hand revelation, on the other hand it could mean trouble. So it is best to be prepared when you are dealing with the substances. So today I hope you can hear me well and I will talk about the harm reduction strategies in the context of entheogens. All right, let's roll. So first and foremost, why all of a sudden have I decided to talk about it? Uh, I've been spending a lot of time talking about the potential, the healing potential of entheogens and the ways in which they can help heal trauma, depression, PTSD, anxiety and other types of mental illnesses. But even though the hype is happening and the psychedelic renaissance is unraveling, it is critical and it is important to talk about the harm aspects. So even though psychedelics are extremely safe, and I have proof because there are studies and there's a widely known professor called David Nutt, so he did a study several years ago and he tried to compare very harm caused by various types of substances. So I will provide that particular reference in this episode. So if you go from the top to bottom, the top one would be alcohol of all the substances, then heroin, then tobacco, and then other substances like methamphetamine and the rest. Surprisingly enough, psychedelics are quite safe. In fact, if we are talking about classic psychedelics, the tryptamines, which are like LSD, psilocybin mushrooms, ayahuasca, DMT, what else? Uh, Salvin orine and yeah, and marijuana. There is no lethal dose of those. Okay, so they are extremely safe for the body, not for the mind though, because remember they're mind manifesting, meaning yeah, they can fuck up your brain. Not really. I mean, they're not gonna mess with your neuron connections. Don't worry but they can cause damage to your psyche, especially if you are a person who is either predisposed to a severe type of mental illness like depression or PTSD or maybe some other variations of it, bipolar disease for instance. So in those cases your situation could even become worse. If it was okay it could become bad, if it was bad it could become like a nightmare pretty much during your trip. So that is why I want to talk more and more about the safety measures that need to be taken in order to, first of all, trip safely, but then of course, heal your mental illnesses and be able to develop yourself. All right, I got some notes here, which I will be referring to. So moving onwards, harm reduction. So there, there were, a couple of cases in the history and I did an episode on the myth debunking. There are a lot of myths around psychedelics, about the potential harm that they cause, which does, which has nothing to do with the reality. Okay, so watch that episode separately. But today I want to mention two particular cases that are widely discussed and used to highlight the dangers of psychedelic substances. So one would be case in US actually done by MK Ultra which is a CIA basically so they experimented on people they gave people LSD and watched them what would they do like what would happen if a person accidentally takes LSD and there was a case when person just got out of the window and you know went to the ground basically died because that person thought he was losing his mind and yeah psychedelics or entheogens as I prefer to call them they can mimic psychosis they, that was their original names psychotic mimetic that's why people who are are not aware of what to expect can 
face some really severe difficulties in terms of their perception, in terms of how they see the world, and in terms of whatever is happening in the psyche. Okay, so there is another case in the Netherlands, and that one is totally different. So there was a French student, and that person bought psychedelic oh, psilocybin mushrooms in one of the smart shops in Amsterdam. Unfortunately, that person decided to jump off the bridge and eventually die. Ever since, psilocybin mushrooms are prohibited in the Netherlands, but psilocybin truffles are widely sold and you can go to the store and buy them but of course you have to be careful when you consume them and of course don't forget in the majority of countries they are outside of the law system meaning they're prohibited by law so owning them or selling or buying could be i don't know chased by the officers or whatnot but anyway what is related with those two particular cases that people didn't really know what they were consuming so in the first instance uh, they a person was experimented and yeah i apologize for half naked bodies behind me i'm recording this on the beach i tried to find a really nice place to do a recording but unfortunately in sri lanka it's not that easy to do i mean the infrastructure here is how do i put it if you've ever heard of a third world country that's pretty much it so yeah it, it's not that developed in terms of the infrastructure so anyway going back to the uh, cases so never ever ever give a psychedelic substance to a person who doesn't know okay so you may commit a crime basically because if person harms him or herself it is on you all right so the second case uh, about Netherlands and Amsterdam in particular the person who jumped off the bridge there is a trick point here, so typically entheogens are not causing suicidal thoughts. Moreover, there are studies confirming that people who consume entheogens are less suicidal and the level of intention for suicide goes down after they consume. Yeah, some sellers nearby are trying to sell somebody to something to passing by. Yeah. Okay, yeah, why not? Hell, I couldn't have found a better place, unfortunately, but yeah, I hope you can hear me. Some lovely lady uh, sitting next to me trying to sell some goods. Apparently, I'm uh, disturbing her business. So anyway, the person definitely was not suicidal. So the reason the person jumped off the bridge wasn't because he wanted to commit suicide. I have a feeling that it happened due to the fact that the person felt invincible or something similar to it. Unfortunately, we cannot ask that person because he's dead. So, long story short, make sure you have a sitter. So, here we are going to a harm reduction pillars. And of course, when we're talking about harm reduction, there are different things that you can take into account, into consideration, in order to avoid possible dangerous consequences for yourself, not for others. I mean, typically, people who consume psychedelics, they can't cause harm to others. Not talking about killing anybody or anything like that more like you know maybe driving car never do that don't just don't do that okay but going back to the pillars so the critical pillars are as usual pretty much so set and setting you've heard of those before if your set mood is shitty if you don't have a proper setting just don't do it ideally find a sober sitter a person who can take care of you and of course remember that you need to understand like what the fuck are you consuming like what is the substance what are the dosages and things like this so even though psychedelics or infusions are used to treat mental illnesses nobody's ever protected from having a difficult trip and what the hell is a difficult trip is your subconscious being revealed on a conscious level and then you are basically interacting with whatever the hell was buried down there it could be a child trauma it could be a severe depression it could be something else so unless you are prepared to address those difficult so unless you are prepared to face those difficulties you shouldn't be doing it in the first place so those are the key pillars and of course there are other measures that you can take into consideration in order to make your trip safer but 
if you're not sure, just don't do it. And remember, I'm talking here about therapeutic potential and therapeutic protocol, which means psychedelic assisted therapy or psychedelic assisted coaching are there to support people meaning that there are people who are taking care of the person who is basically tripping or undergoing a substance experience let's put it this way so those are the critical safety measures and there is one other thing called integration so i've mentioned to you before about it but it is fundamental yeah, let's just wait while uh, she tries to sell something to somebody. Okay, it didn't happen. Unfortunately for her, I don't know, like, what what are the people behind me doing? <laughs> I'm actually intrigued. Like, maybe there is some evil sights heading my way. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? But anyway, going back to integration. So integration is critical. And they, there could be cases when a person, you know, decides under some circumstances to take a substance and if the person is not prepared it could be actually a really bad experience Just some coconuts some fancy coconuts here all right so for instance if you do have an anxiety and um, on one hand you can treat anxiety but on the other hand it could in intensify under the influence of the substances that's why it is absolutely paramount to be prepared for such experience and make sure that you're ready to face whatever is coming from the depths of your subconsciousness otherwise just don't ever do it or you know find a professional who can help you out and follow you and guide you to, during the experience and make sure that you're safe and you won't cause any significant damage to your psyche so remember in a nutshell psychedelics or infusions cannot cause you physical harm all those stories about you know like holes in your brain or stuff like that this is just total bullshit there is no scientific evidence whatsoever to back up that claim but when it comes to psyche things are becoming very different because remember infusions have been used by indigenous people by millennia in the western world they started to become popular in the middle of 20th century when again people started to investigate their therapeutic potential so in the majority of cases they've been used to treat mental illnesses what does it mean it is your brain it is whatever the hell is happening in your psyche you can on one hand heal whatever type of mental trouble you have there but on the other hand unfortunately you can cause yourself harm even with microdosing and this is something that is not that often discussed but typically people say that you know you can microdose and you become more effective you become more productive more focused and things like this true unless you have a severe form of anxiety or some other mental illness which can unfortunately intensify those feelings and again bring you in a very uncomfortable situation so better to avoid it right what else um, so if you're facing with the consequences of the consumption of the substances there are ways that you can get additional support there are communities there are people who can help you out and in English language it's always easier to do so unfortunately in other languages it's not that easy but there are people who can help you out so if you are feeling extremely depressed if under some circumstances you faced a very difficult trip and you're experiencing something that you don't want to feel anymore please make sure to reach out for help reach out to I don't know your friends reach out for professional support meaning a psychologist psychiatrist a coach or somebody who knows what those substances can do to human brain and how do they affect psyche okay Right, so I think I'm gonna wrap up here and try to summarize what I've been talking about. So I tried to give you an idea of the necessity for harm reduction and to remind you once and again that psychedelics are no joke. Even though in the majority of countries they are prohibited, they are extremely safe when it comes to 
physical reactions actually there is no scientific evidence whatsoever that they can cause harm when it comes to psychological aspect to it they can cause harm so even though they are quite safe they're not 100 percent bulletproof that's why you need to be aware of the potential consequences of the consumption of those substances okay i hope that was helpful if not Please do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching and until next time.